Hi everyone, my name is Luis Valdez and I am the Executive Director of the 3MF Consortium. And today I have the pleasure to host a good friend of mine, Alex Oster and Swalp Ozell from Autodesk. Alex and I go all the way back to the foundations of 3MF. And we're gonna be talking about that in a little bit and also about the directions in the future. So Swalp and Alex, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves? Hi, Luis. Thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Suel Pozel. I am the Senior Product Manager in charge of additive manufacturing uh, software solutions here at Autodesk. Uh, we focus our efforts on Fusion 360, NetFab, and NetFab Simulation. I've been with Autodesk since 2009, and I started focusing on additive manufacturing around 2016 and started working with Alex and his team. Um, hello, I'm Alex Oster, and I'm with Autodesk in 2016 as Director of Additive Manufacturing, and I lead the engineering team that does everything that Swap wants us to do, in a way. Um, we have worked very long back together with Luis and HP and the team um, to define additive manufacturing file standards, um, like 3MF, in the 3MF consortium. And we have, uh, over the years, developed a a lot of specifications and technical documents that just make everybody's life in the 3D printing industry better. It's well, let's start with you. I know that Fusion 360 had a very recent release, which had a lot of the newest 3MF capabilities supported. So can you talk a little bit about that and what that means in terms of benefits for the user? Yeah, sure. Uh, so for those of you who don't know Fusion 360, uh, it is our cloud-connected CAD, CAM, and CAE tool. And with the July uh, 2021 release, uh, we uh, added the capability to import 3MF files, use them in our design workflows, both parametrically and uh, in a direct way, as well as take geometry that's created in Fusion and export it as a 3MF file. Now we can do this for our design workflows where we design something and export it as 3MF, or uh, our users can do the same if they have created a manufacturing model where they created their tool paths or, you know, um, or print preparation, export that as a 3 month as well. That's perfect, Swab. So Alex, in terms of the different users in the ecosystem, you know, when you think about brands, designers, service bureau, who stands the most to benefit from this additional new Fusion 360 capabilities? Yes, so um, if, you, if you look back how 3MF was created in the first place, it's more of, it was always designed as a pipeline format. So I would say that service bureaus benefit the most because you have instancing, you have units, you have textures and colors kept throughout the workflows, especially for printers like the HP printer with those colors and textures. Um, so I would say that service bureau workflow is the natural one that benefits from something or also support structures that are kept together with the design files in the right way. Um, but we, we, we're seeing that designers who want to mix CAD geometry and meshes or do lattice workflows and other fancy things um, have a great need of a file format container that transports all this information to the printer. And we are seeing an really an uptick in usage on the design work, on the designer side, on the machine vendor side, who add their own native uh, um, additions and extensions to it. So I would say that the whole ecosystem um, benefits from features that we're offering. Very good. It's exciting to see that uptick in adoption. Now back to you, Swalp. So why do you think 3MF is important to the 3D printing ecosystem? Uh, today, we see um, three key things that uh, folks are benefiting from. Um, when they import uh, mesh geometry, if they are importing things like STL, um, STL doesn't contain units. So there's a good chance that the geometry that they're importing, they have to know the scale and then rescale it. Well, we don't have that problem with 3MF. Um, the 3MF contains units. So that's that's one key benefit that we are seeing. And of course, there's the colors and the textures as well. Um, uh, the next one is probably on the uh, manufacturing side, which is when they orient their geometries and then they create their support structures. Um, those support structures are also contained in the 3MF file. Uh, which uh, really uh, reduces uh, the complexity of different file formats. And then the final thing is, you know, going back to the insert workflows again, 
um, STLs are notorious for being bad. And we see a lot of our users immediately going over to mesh repair mode and spending time and effort repairing those bad STLs. And once again, we don't have those same problems with 3MF uh, due to the file format. A lot of work went into creating the 3MF file format, trying to make sure that uh, all of this information is captured and is accurate. And we're see our users are definitely seeing uh, the benefit of all of that. Very good. Now, Saul, can you talk a little bit about how a designer or a creator that's using Fusion 360, once he gets the design completed, how can he use that to connect to the different machine vendors that you support? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, once um, the design is finished and they, they put their uh, geometry on their build platform of choice, um, we also have partnered with companies like HP, like Ultimaker, uh, to transfer both the part orientations uh, or slices or tool paths uh, over to the, uh, the software of choice or to the printer uh, for those um, partners. And so with HP and Ultimaker, for example, we transfer the 3MF file directly uh, to the necessary software or the hardware. And uh, that way our users can benefit from uh, lossless uh, data transfer uh, and uh, get the best out of their uh, prints. Very good, very good. So uh, back to you, Alex. I mean, we've been working together in 3MF since 2014, I think. And we've come a long way in terms of different specifications around color, materials, uh, textures, lattices, security. Now, can you speak a little bit about what we're planning for in the future? So think about the next five to 10 years. What are the new capabilities that we're thinking about bringing to the market using 3MF? Um, th this is very exciting in the in a technical sense, because the last years we have laid the foundations on the craftsmanship, the craftsmanship side of things. So we have uh, detailed out every little bit of ambiguity in the workflows. And now we have a solid foundation to really make the exciting pieces of technology work that have that excite people in the future, like transparency, volumetric color, volumetric other volumetric properties, um, and and many more that uh, you can't even dream of today. Very good. This is exciting to see where this is going to take us. I'm looking forward to hearing from you, all the audience. Uh, if you have any inputs on which directions the 3MF uh, should go, go ahead and reach out to us through our website or our social media channels. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Swab, for coming today. It's been a pleasure. I look forward to working with you in, in the future again.